it seems that most people in the room uh, know what flat wire is, so I'm going to uh, skip through. So, you know, we're looking for ways to uh, be involved in the community fund and to be able to work together in our This is a very natural uh, Okay. So, I'm not going to show you next slide. I have the last slide. Um, it was a really successful uh, three-day happy hour month on the Virgin Islands. I just connected. Uh, I can't say the speed uh, highway has a higher time to use logic. There are 18 problems. And there are additional languages that are very much we have. We used to go to the data sets. It's impossible. We're, we're uh, very strong as we work in the early lawful customization of the single region that we want to be able to work at least they will be on our own. We've got our experience with uh, the Russian Specs, 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 and the current market, you know, professional release of this is January uh, next year. Where the uh, call comes in, uh, we have a transmit service client that's in, you know, inside the slot fire array. That then evokes a REST call out to the transform server. And I'm going to show this whole process here in a moment. Uh, that call then returns a JSON uh, data set, which is then uh, received, the message is received by uh, the slot fire side transform service client. It goes out to a response. I think questions as we get here, so I'll pause here for a moment. Are there any questions on this? There are obviously more than the questions that they have involved. Those data and spool in the uh, rows as they come across and then package it all as a uh, data table inside spot <coughs> Alright, so here's a uh, spot bar frame. Uh, inside the spot bar then we've added this ability to say open from transport data source. Is this the web app or is it the desktop app? Uh, this is the desktop app. Um, I'm going to disconnect myself here just so I can mention the connection process. So um, if I have just opened this for the first time, or if uh, my session has been open for a very long time, such that I no longer have a valid transmark uh, session token, uh, I will be presented with uh, the transmark login screen. So this is going to, I should say, to a test server that they're kind of interested by uh, the highway. You know, they have made the server available for us to basically develop these really nice things. Putting in the super secret password for the admin. Um, if it's the first time I use it from this client, it will actually uh, uh, ask them to authorize their record. And so it will create something that's saying you want to authorize this client to access trend Yes. Is it in Pop-Off? Yes. We're using the native uh, uh, Transmark security menu. It's the all. Um, this then, you know, obviously in the first action it did is it went and it got the list of studies. So it actually executed that first flow that I showed. Um, selecting that, it's initiating a um, go out. Uh, my second study will go out and the tables. Uh, one uh, design decision we made at this point uh, that we are going to repeat that on is, and you see this in a moment, is that the uh, our perception, or at least our bias, is that the most efficient way to do the, the data manipulation is to pull the clinical data all the way to spot bar and manipulate that one side. Sure. That's certainly an arguable design decision, and I look for feedback from folks as to whether or not that the code is whether or not it's really that design decision. But in here, as a, I want to bring the clinical observations, there is an option here at the top, which is a little bit hard to read on the screen. Okay, I think that's a little bit better at least. So there's an all observations, so if I select that, 
the column goes out, and spot our uh, collects all those observations in this. If we are showing just the native result set coming back uh, off of the REST API. So here you have the label, uh, which anyone here has used trans model or recognize the path, uh, the values corresponding to that label. Uh, for the text values, it very nicely is determining that the ultimate uh, node of the path is the value for the ultimate node. And so it's, it's correctly handled both the text as well as the map. So at this point, it would be fairly easy for me, for example, to take this data, which is the keyword value error, and begin to manipulate it. So uh, for example, a really simple thing I might want to do here would be to draw this as a uh, pie chart. I could easily then within this and change what I'm labeling by. So forth. Uh, the astute observer. Oh, that's <laughs> Juggling two computers, how very common. <laughs> um, so, the, yeah, the observant person will recognize there's a problem here, right? Where I have this uh, keyword value pair set. We're going to give you a few things of this. I'm going to pivot it and, and go off of what I call the data table on it. You know, I'm not going to hit the steps with the spot card if you do that natively. But this brings me to, you know, uh, I'll come back to that concept in a moment. So having put in what we call observations, I might want to then bring in an additional data table. So again, the way we implemented this is it's fully compliant with what uh, spot card requirements expects for a data source. And so you know, any place where you could add a data table or access any data in spot card is not available. Uh, just natively, and it will behave as any other uh, native spot card data source. So here in this example, uh, I'm going to bring in one of the high data sets. So in this example set, there's an acrobatics chip, and you'll notice that it's represented four times. The reason for this is uh, the data can be projected, like we multiple projections of high dimensional data. And in our uh, spot card connector, we are looking for recognizing all those projections and making them available so the user can choose which projections they want to bring in for analysis. In this example, I'll just bring in the default value, which is the absolute uh, measure expression level. And this is the one um, that I'm not going to have it's the better off runs because this is pointing out to the only drugs. But it will run in the background the table. There's no mechanism that makes them aware of bringing back a set of genes or protocols. Is that like a food in that kind of thing? No. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I know we we support this for the uh, engaging in the internal API for the API. Yeah, that's not. There's no implementation problem. It's a very clean REST API implementation, uh, in my opinion. It's very very nicely done. All right, I'm going to go a little bit faster because I think given the time, I'll be keeping on the time. So the second demo uh, is calling us to do a transport to so be to a spot our template. So in this example. So here, I've done the very same thing. So I've uh, done calls to create two data tables, one for the high dimensional data set, one for the clinical observations data set. And fully within the spot card frame, I've done the manipulations to it. So this frame is that um, clinical data, but I've pivoted it. So now I have diagnosis, um, I have age, I have ethnicity, I have E1, because this is a chronic uh, uh, construction pulmonary study. Uh, so we're so taking that whole pulse scanning data table and now pivot it. And that makes it very easy then to build uh, observations. So here I can you know, easily uh, draw a chart for looking at the diagnosis distribution. I have box plot of the uh, distribution of the FEV, the force exploratory volume, uh, across the different diagnosis sets, and so forth. And changing these is, is trivial. If I want to change this from uh, sex to race, for example. Ethnicity, it's just a matter of cooking. So, you know, part of what we're hoping to do by this is really to encourage, you know, very dynamic data exploration. That's part of the power of what this, this tool brings to the table for this community is yes. you don't have to move your data around, you have to still understand what costs are, and you can just drop it into this exploratory tool. Um, I have initial data, again, it's pulled in here. Uh, with NSN, I have dynamically cooked this, 
So now I've gone from my ML skinny representation of the expression data into the representation that's a little bit easier to do data by the way. For your rows and your quotes, the columns and examples, you can do the transpose of that. And then this is an example, I got this into a PCA analysis. And so now if I have my principal component analysis, I can color this by my different uh, characteristics. Um, I gotta get myself. <sighs> Move this. The big point is to show you easily uh, go in here, you can see an outlier, you can remove that outlier, you can easily call by different observations and so forth. So again, in the interest of time. So the last point about this is having created this template, I don't have to recreate it for every study. Let's say I have this template built out nicely that walks you some steps and I want to draw from the study end. Uh, all I have to do to do that is hit this reload, and it will reprompt me for whatever study I want to bring in. And this is one of the key powers of a tool like Spotfire, is you can dynamically go out, very flexible analysis, focus on whatever aspect of the science you want, and then you don't have to redo it every single time. You can just drop another data set in. Yes? And the PCA part of the uh, Spotfire, So there's a, there's a bunch of analyses that are part of Spotfire. PCA is actually one of the ones that's part of an additional package that we provide. You can also, though, you know, just natively in Spotfire the integration with R. I can basically make the data function and associate it with the button here where I can drop it into R through the results back in. So it's a very, very deep integration with R. So the way that transpar is integrated with R through Spotfire. Well, there's a direct integration to R. You can, there's a direct connection from R to um, uh, Transmart. You can also pull the data into this environment and also still use the power of R as your original integration. The last thing I want to touch on real quick is kind of where we're going, which is we have a whole suite of unmixed analysis tools. And within this, we have uh, built in now this ability to go in and create a new um, a direct connection into these tool sets directly from Transmart. So from here in Transmart, I can again select the study of interest, select the, uh, the expression type that I want to use, and then what we configure inside of your uh, experimental designs, so what characteristics they want to compare, uh, annotation sources, so pulling things like gene identification, functional analysis, using new terms, and so forth. And the net result of this is then a nicely configured uh, set of analyses for being able to do uh, uh, for a demo, <laughs> looking at the expression ranks. You know, I only have a minute left, so I don't want to now, if people are more interested in this, this is the direction we're going for our whole suite of capabilities. We want to enable uh, a user to pull data from Transmart and drop that directly into uh, all those capabilities for doing full-fledged open analysis, mean expression analysis, signature definition, and so forth. All right, I think I have two minutes left. I guess I will just uh, thank everyone for their time and attention. And uh, Maybe I would love to have other organizations maybe have the same capital like here and like features who are trying to do it now. Awesome ways to try to work at you know, with other commercial development partners. There's a lot of people want access to your data that can't get into tab. And so there are ways of slicing guys in that pile. My 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 sales coordinator can tell me if I can say we're here and we are here to make some money. It's part of our reason why we have a lot of years for no one wants to pay any money for you because they don't want to do it. But I'm fully aware of, my wife's a professor at CU, so I'm very aware of the very high funding environments that the reality of my check So come back and see if we can get her back. I have never heard anyone say, oh, we got plenty of money. You're in your own check. It just doesn't happen. Thank you very much. Next we have... Uh...